Hey guys, welcome to probably the first amazingly gorgeous day we've had here in the UK. Uh, I'm at Nam Studios as always, and today I want to take a look at some of the new stuff we've got in. We've got in some new preamps. We've got some 1073 Neve style preamps, and I want to show you guys what they can do on base. So let's go and check them out. Hey guys, I'm Tyler. Thank you for tuning into the channel once again. If you're new around here, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you enjoy this content and want to see more, hit that subscribe button and notification bell as well to keep up to date with the latest from the channel and when I go live. So in this video, I'm going to talk about 1073 style EQs and preamps. Absolute studio classic. Um, sound great on guitar, sound great on bass, sound bass great on drums. They sound great on everything really. Um, that Neve sound is a classic. But in this instance, I'm going to talk about it specifically on bass um, and show you some of the cool things about that style of EQ, some of the ways you can get the best from them, and maybe make you consider whether you want to buy one for your own recording at home um, or to maybe even put in a rack. You could use one of these live. You could use it as your sole preamp if you wanted to. It could be your amplifier tied to a power amp. So many options for this kind of thing. And it's just a great sound. It's a classic sound, and I think it's worthy of doing a video. So um, I'm here at Nam Studios, and we've got a whole host of new bits and pieces in that we've been looking at and, and getting in. Um, and the first of these to come in, really, was this um, Warm Audio WA273EQ. And it's a clone of a Neve. Um, no, it's not an actual Neve. No, it's probably not as expensive as a proper Neve. It's probably not maybe as good as a proper Neve, um, but it will give you the character, it will give you that style, and that's really all you need if you're making music, you want it to sound good, and if it sounds good, then it is good. Um, and that's what we've got here with this device. So I'm gonna run you through the front panel a bit, um, and then we'll talk about some of those Neve characteristics, and I'll play a little bit um, and show you the effect of each of the EQ settings and that preamp as well, which is super cool. Um, so. I've got the bass running straight into the device. Um, it's going into the instrument input. Quite often I've run this with a DI, um, but in this instance, just running it into the built-in instrument DI on the unit itself um, does a decent job, to be honest. Um, we have this gain knob, which has got the classic Neve knob on it, um, Neve style knobs. And um, in this instance, um, we don't need most of it, we don't need most of the uh, range of it because the instrument level stuff is all in the kind of top last little section here. Um, so there's an off here and then after that we're kind of into the highest levels of gain. Um, then we have a high pass filter, um, so that will cut out any excessive low end, so we're talking 50, 80, 160, 300 hertz. Um, and then we have an Eve EQ, so we've got a shelving EQ on the bottom and a shelving EQ on the top um, and different frequencies able to be selected here so the bottom of the the ring selects the different frequencies and the top of the ring um, and the top selects how much boost and cut you want of each of those frequencies um, so on the bottom end we've got off 35 hertz 60 110 220 um, and then off again uh, on the mid range, we've got 360, 700, 1600, 3200, 4500, and then 7200. And then on the top end, it's slightly different to a traditional Neve EQ. A traditional Neve EQ would have a fixed frequency of 12k, um, but this has got more of a 1084 style element to it, so you can choose your top frequency, um, and that is from 10, 12, and 16 kilohertz. So those are some of the different settings that you've got. Um, for now, I'm gonna stick with the preamp element of this, and then we'll move into the EQ as well. Um, Neves are just renowned for their preamps and what they can do. Um, I know there are a lot of pedals out there. There's a lot of pedals um, for bass and guitar that model the sound of a Neve. Um, and there's a reason for it, because they sound really cool. One of the guitar players that I've played with um, in a few bands and a few things, uh, Joe Coombs, he uses a Hudson Broadcast, which I believe is a Neve um, in a pedal. And it's just super cool. Um, and I'll leave his Instagram below so you can check that out in the description. They sound great on guitar and they sound cool on bass as well. So I'll give you a playthrough here. Um, this is the gain on its lowest setting. What I'm gonna do is try and balance it out so 
the sound you're hearing is balanced um, and anything that's not quite perfect I'll do in post so you should be hearing exactly the same sound um, and level so it won't be the level that makes you think it sounds better it will just be the different tone um, so here we go this is all the EQ taken out um, and the first gain setting high pass off um, here we go And then I'm going to give it a little bit more gain and back off the master again. And again, another level of gain. Just every little step just fattens it up a little bit. It doesn't really make it sound distorted or anything, just sounds fatter. Um, and another one. We're getting pretty close now. We've just got two more notches to go after this one. This is the penultimate notch. Starting to feel the grit a bit there, it's a little bit furrier. I think that's probably my favourite setting. Um, and then this is all out and we'll hear some distortion now. So that's the preamp element of this. It just sounds super cool to me. It just it just got fatter without really getting dirty until the very last um, the last couple of settings. And that's really the joy of saturating something, the joy of distorting something a little bit, but not really obviously. Things like the Klon Centaur, those type of pedals that add a little bit of something, they're adding a little bit of dirt, but it's not super heavy. Um, and that's what that's really doing with the Neve. It's just everything gets fatter and I really like it. So what I'm gonna do is go back one notch, maybe two, we'll go back two notches just for safe headroom. And I just think it sounds fat. Um, so that's kind of back where we are, and I'm going to go through the different EQ settings and give you some suggestions as to how they might be really good or beneficial. Um, so this is back where we are. So yeah, like that, fat enough but just on the edge of being too furry. So we've got the high pass filter here, and I think it's really important, I think it really helps get a clear and defined sound when you've got all these shelving EQs. So the shelving EQ is going to just boost everything below that frequency. It'll boost a little bit above the frequency you've chosen, but the majority of it will just be a flat shelf of everything beneath it straight up. Um, and with a shelf, you know, that means it's going right down to zero hertz all the way up to that frequency that you've chosen and a little bit beyond. So if you've got you know, boosting going on right down there, you're just creating mud that you don't really need um, and your speakers aren't going to be able to replicate. You just don't need it really. So a high pass is super useful for that. Um, and we've got 50 hertz, 80, 160 and 360. As a bass player, you don't want to be cutting into 160, you don't want to be cutting into 360 too much. Um, you just don't want to be cutting everything below those away. Um, but cutting away 50 gives you a little bit more space for the kick drum, or cutting 80 again gives you pretty much all the space for the kick drum. So one of those two frequencies I'd suggest you cut. Uh, I'm gonna stick with 50 so we've got a nice full sound on the video, but maybe in a mix it might make more sense to use 80 instead. Um, so just gonna show you the difference between high pass and not. So with it soloed, you can hear a little bit that there's something missing, but now when we start adding EQ in, we're not gonna be just boosting up rubbish underneath. So, from my perspective, 35 probably doesn't need to be boosted. Um, there are lots of cool tricks with Neve EQs where you can boost where you've cut. Um, 
much like a Paul Tech EQ if anyone's used one of those. Um, but I'm going to start with the 60. Uh, I typically wouldn't boost 60 because I think kick drums live there. Um, but you can boost it with the high pass filter um, and boost it with the high pass filter at 80. And uh, it just gives a totally different character. Um, but I think it's quite dubby with the 60. So this is quite a lot of EQ. Um, it's not all the way up, but probably three quarters of the way up on 60. And that's cool. I think that's got a kind of sound that I know would fit in a mix. It's going to pop just above. Um, and that's the cool thing with these shelves. It's boosting underneath, but also a bit above. So you're getting maybe a bit above 80 uh, being boosted as well. Um, so yeah, it's cool for that. Now we're moving up to 110. I'll drop the high pass back to 50. Um, I think 100 hertz, really great for bass. It's a great place to be boosting. Just above the kick drum and just underneath everything else, but not too heavy. Something just classic about that to me. Um, again, let's boost that with the uh, 80 hertz high pass filter. Cool, keeps it simple, clears a little bit more of that low end out. Now we got to 220. Personally, I don't like boosting at 200 hertz. Um, I don't think it really adds anything to the sound for me. Um, so I'd, I'd maybe like to suggest cutting a little bit here. So I've just cut a little bit at 200. Um, let's see how that sounds. Just cleans a little bit of the mid range that we don't need out from there. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my suggestions for how you might want to use the bass element of this EQ. I'll turn it back to off. Um, now we've got the mid-range stuff. Some of this mid-range stuff I think is really useful frequencies and some of it gets a bit beyond useful, but we'll go through a lot of it. Um, so 360, again, a lot like 200 for me. I like to cut a little bit here. Um, that's more of a recording thing than maybe a live thing. I kind of leave it flat live, um, but recording definitely cut a little bit around the 360, 400. Um, so that's just a little bit cut back, um, and here's how that sounds. I like that, it leaves plenty of bottom end there, just ducks it out in the mid-range a bit, and makes it sound a bit clearer to me, it just emphasises the stuff above. Um, now 700, 700 is a frequency I would be pretty happy to boost on bass, um, so I give it three quarters here, maybe a bit much, but just give it an idea. Maybe a bit much, maybe let's take that back a little bit. great just adds a bit of noise you know that's going to cut through in a mix so now we're looking at 1600 um, again this is kind of a finger noise pick clank type frequency it's not quite where I'd have all of these all of these are a little bit off from where I would naturally do it in a DAW but they're quite wide curves so it means that they are going to boost those frequencies anyway um, I'd probably boost 2k for this but 1600 is not too far away it's going to sit right around the middle um, and summer 2k is going to be going up it's going to be boosting a little bit of that nearer 1k as well so this should be good for adding more presence again so this is that 75 percent boost on uh 1600 again i'm going to give that a little bit of a cut like the last um frequency at 700 so it's just a little bit on a 
again, super useful. Um, I could really see how that would help me cut through. Now we're looking at 3,200. Um, 3K is probably starting to get into the kind of edge type of the sound. Um, so let's give that a go. Probably not something I'll be boosting very often. I'd probably be focused more on the rest of the mid-range than putting the mid-range selector all the way up here. Um, but it's worth checking out. So here we go. Nice, solid, adds a little bit of that edge, um, that Sadowski type cut that's normally at about 4K. Um, now we look at just underneath 5K, so we're 4.8K. Um, and again, same amount of boost, this is just gonna add more zing to the sound as well. Zing, but probably not enough in the bass to really make that noticeable um, and then this is 7.2k I think with bass everything up to 4k you can really notice and after that you're kind of boosting things that aren't there um, so let's give that a go on 7k See, for me now, I feel like that's not really having an effect on the bass sound too much. Um, it's just producing this kind of little bit of sheen, which maybe you want if it's a soloed bass part. Um, but I think in a mix, it would kind of probably get lost. And so really leading on from that, I think the treble frequencies on this aren't really that helpful for us as bass players. Um, but I'll give you a little bit of a playthrough anyway. So this is 10K, um, just quickly. And then 16k. So with all of those frequencies, I think really they're kind of out of the range of doing anything useful on bass. Um, they add a little bit of a sheen, but it's not, for me, it's not really sheen. It's more like kind of fingery noise, um, the sound of the fret on the string, things like that, that probably aren't really necessary. So I'd generally just leave that off or leave it flat or maybe cut a little bit if I didn't want to have any of those kind of sounds, you know, in the sound. So now I've run through the EQ settings, I'm going to just give you an example of some different tones you might want to try and reach for, some different settings you might want to reach for um, with one of these EQs and preamps. So I'm on the same gain setting um, and I have boosted 50%, about 110, and I've boosted 700 hertz a little bit as well. This I'd use for kind of a rocky thing, wanting to cut through, um, but be present in the mid range. Next, I'm gonna do a more kind of dull, maybe slightly more country kind of sound. Um, so I'm gonna boost, I'm gonna switch it up to 3200 and then just take a little bit off that. So we've got a little bit less edge, a little bit more of that kind of slightly duller, rounder, more country sound. Um, same level of boost on 100 hertz. The boost at 100 hertz will be roughly the same. Next setting I've done here is 110 hertz boosted all the way. I've cut a little bit at 1600, so a little bit less finger noise, um, and I'm high passing at 80 hertz. This is kind of a big, smooth sound that might fit in a mix um, that was quite sparse. Not too much finger noise, not too much attack kind of sound. And then I'm going to do a similar sound, but boost it even lower. So I'm going to drop down to 50 hertz, drop the EQ down to 60 hertz. Um, I'm going to cut more around 700, um, and hopefully it should be a fat kind of round sound. So 
there we go, those are some of the things you might be able to do with a Neve style EQ, a 1070 3 style EQ and preamp. I think what struck me is how I can boost things all the way and they still sound musical. Um, I think that's one of the reasons that Neve EQs and preamps are so popular um, is because they allow you to really shape the tone, but they never take away the heart of that sound. So they really allow you to enhance the sound, but not really completely destroy it. Um, I'm really impressed that I can boost those bass frequencies all the way and not feel like they overpower it. Uh, I think there are quite a wide variety of sounds just using those few EQ points. And I think that's something to remember is that whilst we have all these EQs available to us that can boost any frequency and um, any amount that we really want in the digital world, having something like this that has its limits allows you to really dial in and think about your sound, think about what you want from your sound and how you can get there most quickly. Um, I think that's really most prominent when you're looking at the bass and the, the mid-range. I think the treble on these units isn't necessarily all that helpful to us as bass players, but if we want something that we can use for maybe vocals as well, something that can double up in a studio setting, then, I mean, one of these is great. I really like the fact that at 700 hertz you've got a certain character and also with the 1600 you've got a different character again. Um, I think just switching between those, boosting and cutting really changes a lot of your sound. Going up to 3200, um, I think you have another kind of edginess if you want to have that there if you need it in your sound. Um, but again, you can also you can take that away and just really smooth out what you're doing. Um, so. Those are just some hints and tips when it comes to this style of EQ and obviously a bit of a demo of the warm um, WA273 EQ. I've been really impressed with it. I've used it on a lot of things here in the studio. Uh, it's getting regular use on pretty much pretty much everything that comes in um, in one way or another. I've had all sorts of instruments. Sounds great with instruments direct into it, direct into the mic priest. Um, and so that's why, and one of the real reasons, it really suits bass. Um, amongst other things. Let me know your thoughts on this EQ and preamp. Let me know if you've used this style of preamp in your recording um, or in your live rig. I know a lot of people like to use things like this as their main preamp for their live bass rig and I think it's totally doable. Um, I think the high pass filter is something that's really enlightening as well um, and something worth checking out. So let me know if you're using one of those in your live rig too. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully it's been of interest. Let me know what you want to see uh, next in the comments below. Sorry this has kind of become the uh, recording base channel, um, but that's all I'm doing now and it really is kind of my passion. Um, so talking about different sounds, how you manipulate them in a studio setting, um, is something that I really enjoy. And there's no gigs to be done here in the UK at the minute. Um, so for the minute, it will be kind of firmly in the studio and recording territory, but hopefully there's something um, for you in what I'm doing. So thank you for watching. Let me know any comments and questions you have below. My Instagram will be linked um, just below me right now. And I will see you in the next video.